Hello everybody and welcome to my kitchen. If you are new here then hey my name is Kaylin and I like to post cooking videos. I talk about intuitive eating. This is an anti-diet page, okay? You're not gonna hear words like healthy, unhealthy. I'm not gonna be talking about the protein in this and the carbs in that. Like I find that's really exhausting and also an exhausting way to live life. I've been there, I've recovered from three different eating disorders and for the rest of my life, I wanna focus on what makes me feel good and what makes me happy and there's room for all foods in that, okay? And we are in my kitchen and we're gonna make some dinner together. Well, we're kind of prepping dinner because I am going to be making a leek and potato soup. I'm so excited for fall and it's soup season and butternut squash soup and pea soup and mm, I love soups. And this is literally the easiest soup you will ever make, okay? If you've never made a soup before, start here because it literally is like, five ingredients plus spices. Okay, so we're not gonna be cooking for too long and I will leave my rough estimates in the description down below. But I figured while we're here, while we're cooking, while we're in a safe place, we will talk a little bit about weight gain and also the sort of like weight loss epidemic that's going on around us. Also, you might hear my sink, you might hear my dishwasher. These are just human sounds, human house sounds, okay? And we're just gonna go with it but these potatoes are the dirtiest things ever. So we're gonna wash these potatoes and we're gonna get to chatting and yapping. And if there's one thing you should know about me is I can yap all day. If you're one of my clients, you know that. We can just yap and yap and yap and yap and yap. But anyway, I'm just gonna grab my strainer or colander and give them a little rinse. You've probably seen people peel potatoes before. So it's not the most interesting thing, but I have five golden potatoes over here or yellow potatoes and we're just going to peel them and roughly chop them up and i'm going to talk to you the way i would talk to one of my besties okay one of my friends because i consider all of you my besties my friends we just we gel well we vibe you're here i'm here why not just have a little chat recently me with the knife there has been so much shit online and what i've been seeing so much is like this promotion promotion promoting Anyway, we, I've seen a lot of creators promote like these what I eat in a day to stay skinny videos and like how to lose weight. And there's so many people who are on Ozempic. And I know that a lot of people can see, you know, celebrities or content creators and things like that and their bodies changing. And I do want to preface this video by saying that I believe in body autonomy. I believe that people can do whatever they want with their body, okay? But I also believe that we deserve to leave our bodies be and let them find a place where they naturally feel most comfortable at. And the thing is, is that every single body is different. And so when people post these videos of what I eat in a day and how I stay skinny and how I don't gain weight and everything like that, you can eat the exact same thing as somebody. You can do their exact workout routine or whatever it might be, and you're not going to look like them. And that is because you are not them. And all bodies have an individual and unique blueprint that is different from one another. Having washboard abs or having no fat on your stomach is not realistic, especially if you are somebody who has female anatomy. And I think social media has really warped our idea of what is normal, of what is real. Because if you think of people in your life, your family members, your friends, people you see on the street, people you see at the beach, people you see in the grocery store, we see different bodies everywhere. And it is so incredibly rare to see somebody who has a completely flat stomach. And even then, even if we are looking at people and comparing ourselves to them, or we see what somebody posts on social media, you literally only have a couple of chapters in their book. You do not know the full extent of what they do, whether they eat all of the food that they say that they're eating, whether they eat more, whether they restrict, whether they even have a good relationship with themselves or food in the first place. But human beings in general are not meant to have no fat on our bodies. Fat is essential to life. It is important for our function. It's important for our energy resources. For women, it's also very important to have fat on our body for reproductive reasons, for hormone health, for so many, so many different reasons on why it is normal and okay. And bodies can be unique for so many different reasons. A lot of us can be genetically predisposed to either being in thinner bodies or larger bodies, just like somebody can be genetically predisposed to being tall or short. We accept so many things about our body 
that we can't change, like our shoe size, our height, the color of our hair, the color of our eyes. These are things that we just accept like as is or that we accept very easily and we don't really try to change them. But when it comes to weight, so many people believe that you can manipulate your weight. And the thing is, is that you can. Can you lose weight or gain weight? Sure, yes you can. But at the same time, is that sustainable for you? Is your body going to be happy? Can you maintain this sort of thing? And so much research shows that people who lose weight end up gaining it back. And a lot of the time is because people are so focused on a number, on the scale, on getting smaller and smaller. And they don't realize that this can come with a lot of different kinds of risks, like metabolic damage. It can ruin your relationship with food, the way that you view yourself. And if you try to hate yourself into a version that you're gonna love, that is never going to work. Everybody has a different weight that is gonna be best for them and they have a range that can change throughout their life for various reasons. And sometimes weight can change because of our environment. It can change because of medication, because of chronic illness, because of so many different things. And I see just so much judgment towards people who are in larger bodies and so much admiration for people who are in thin bodies, but restriction, or being in a small body is not something to be proud of, right? I think the things that we need to be proud of as human beings are what goes on up here in our mind, um, are in the way that we treat other people in our hearts. We have bodies and bodies are part of us, but they are not all of us and they are not our entire identity by any means. And even though we can exert some control over our body to a certain extent, it doesn't mean that your body is necessarily going to be happy with where you want it to be. For so many people, we end up chasing bodies that were never actually meant to be our bodies in the first place. And I think for so many people, when we're talking about weight, one of the biggest things that I hear all the time is health. I wanna be healthier. And the thing is, is that weight doesn't equal health. Can we be in a large body and unhealthy? Yes. Can we be in a small body and unhealthy? Absolutely. Weight is not the sole indicator of our health or our well-being. It doesn't say anything about our mental health, our social health, our intellectual health, our spiritual health. And the thing is, is that our health is dictated by behaviors. It's dictated by your stress management, how you sleep, variety when it comes to diet, not how much is on your plate and weighing specific grams of carbs and watching all of your sugars and everything like that. When I tried to control my food, back when I had a really poor relationship with food, I would only ever think about food. It would drive me crazy. In my head, I could literally not think about anything else other than what am I gonna eat next? What am I allowed to eat? Oh, but I'm going to that restaurant later. Can I eat this? Oh, but I had that yesterday. And that is an exhausting way to live. And when we think about health, one of the worst things for our body is stress. And so if your relationship with food and your body brings you stress and you're so stressed about how much you weigh and stepping on the scale and if you see a change in literally your gravitational pull to this world and it feels earth shattering to you, then that should be a sign that there is something wrong in your life and that we are putting so much importance on things that long term are not the most important thing. And that's not me saying that your health isn't important. I absolutely advocate for health. I think that moving in a way that feels good and as long as you're in the right mindset to do that is a beneficial thing. I think that sleeping and taking care of yourself and not drinking too much alcohol or doing too many drugs, all of those kinds of things, those are great. But the thing is, is that being stressed about what you eat every single day and making sure that you hit this amount of protein and everything like that is usually not healthy for the majority of people. And imagine going to a friend's birthday party and instead of thinking about spending time with that friend, you are then playing this game of chess in your own head of what I can eat before and oh, but I wanna save room and calories for this because I don't wanna gain weight. All of those mental gymnastics are unhealthy to do. BMI in general is stupid to focus on for so many different reasons. I have an entire video on BMI. I will link it down below if you wanna check it out. But the number on the scale does not tell us about our muscle mass. It also doesn't tell us about our history. And the BMI scale, I will also say, was not created for women. It was also not created for any minority group or people of color. It does not take into account age, sex, and also like somebody's body composition. Somebody can have so much muscle step on that scale and it says that they are obese or overweight, which again, 
I don't like using those terms. I think that they're outdated, but whatever. And what's interesting is when you look at science, people tend to have a longer lifespan when they fall in the overweight category than they do in the normal category. And so the science and the facts don't even add up with what people are constantly chasing in the first place. You are not put on this earth to just lose weight and pay your taxes. There's like a famous quote that says something like that. But we are on this earth to enjoy life, to enjoy our bodies. These are our vessels to explore life and so we should absolutely take care of them but being at a certain weight does not equal care or health and i know that it can be really conflicting when you're on you know a recovery journey or you're trying to separate yourself from diet culture and everywhere you go there are these ads for weight loss i literally went to the movie theater and there was two ads for Ozempic before the movie started, which I think is crazy because I was also seeing an animated movie, which there were children in the audience. Why are weight loss drugs, which is what they are, being advertised to children? Just saying. And the BMI to go back to that too is that the criteria has literally changed. So for example, what used to be considered overweight used to be considered normal. And so overnight, a bunch of people just went from that normal category to overweight we are putting value in numbers and in these scaling systems that really should not be used when it comes to our overall health in general. I think blood markers are important to pay attention to, blood pressure, certain things like that. But when we only focus on weight, we have this over simplistic view of health, which doesn't leave any room for nuance. And that's the thing about health is my definition might look different than yours. And your definition might look a little bit different than somebody else's. For somebody who has a history with compulsive exercise, maybe taking two years off of movement completely is the healthiest thing for them. And somebody else might disagree depending on where they are in their own journey. But we are so much more than our body and our health is so much more than that number on the scale and whether or not you fit into the same clothes that you wore last summer. Your friends and the people that actually love you and romantic partners or interests should not care about your body and it should not be seen as the most important thing about you. If all of your friends love you because you have I don't know like a thick waist and thin legs or you know long hair or blue eyes that is the most shallow kind of love that I've ever heard about and you want somebody to love you whether these are friends or romantic interests for the person that you are because beauty or the beauty standard as we see it will fade and somebody's true beauty is literally always inside the amount of times that I might have seen somebody that I consider attractive and then they open their mouth and I'm like you're the least attractive person ever, whether they're a misogynist or a racist, or they're just literally not my type of person. It definitely changes attraction because we are not just attracted to an outer shell. And on the other side, there might've been people that I personally wasn't super drawn to originally, but as I've gotten to know them, I find that their personality is so intoxicating and it makes them so much more attractive, right? Somebody who's confident or somebody who's funny, that really changes our attraction level. And it's proof that attraction and love and how we are drawn to people is not again just by some number on the scale but it's by who that person is by their hearts by their brain by the way that they see the world and the reason that we think weight gain is such a bad thing is because look at the messaging that we have in the media how are we not supposed to think that weight gain is bad when every single message wherever you turn it's all about weight loss and it's about how to get smaller and one day it's oat milk is the the new craze and it's great and then the next day oat milk is bad and then eggs are good and then eggs are bad we have these constant changing markers when it comes to diet culture and i could find articles right now online that say beans are good for you and i can literally find other articles online that say beans and legumes are bad and we should stay away from them the only thing that gets to dictate what is good or bad for you and your body is your body so for example if you're allergic to peanut butter of course peanut butter is gonna be bad for you. But for myself, somebody who is not allergic to peanut butter, peanut butter has no consequence on me. And so therefore it is a neutral food. And so often, no matter where we look, bigger bodies are ostracized or spoken about in a negative light. Even when we look at media and movies and films and everything like that and celebrities, you know, a woman ages or she gains some weight and, and now everyone thinks that she's pregnant. Why does a woman having a stomach equal her being pregnant? crazy and over time thinness has just been equated with morality and with attractiveness and also with discipline we're also chopping up our leeks right now and for the soup i'm going to use like this part of the leek 
we're gonna leave these leafy greens and I'm just gonna compost them. And I think something that has really influenced how we look at bodies is Hollywood and the film industry as well as the fashion industry. Because when the word fats came into existence, it was not negative. It was just an adjective like tall or thin or short or stout or whatever it might be. It did not have all of these negative associations that we have with it today. And whenever I say fat in any of my videos, I always use it in a neutral way because I don't think that fat is a bad word. But over time, thinness has become the beauty ideal. But even within the framework of thinness, the beauty ideal has changed. There's this idea that you can be thin and like thick in the right places. And if a woman's face is thin, then she is told that she looks old. But if a woman's stomach is big, she is told that she doesn't care about herself or her health. But the thing is, is that these beauty ideals are always changing. I am 27 and I'm going to be 28 at the end of this year. And even in my lifetime, there's been Victoria's Secret heroin chic that has been the beauty ideal. There is a Kim K body that has been the beauty ideal and it's literally oscillated back and forth. It's curvy and slim thick and then it's heroin chic with no curves and no boobs and no butt and this straight lace kind of body. And the thing is, is that bodies are not trends. The beauty ideals and systems are set up this way so that you can literally never win. And it pisses me off. And we get to choose to opt out of that and it is one of the most freeing things that I've ever done in my entire life. There are all of these false promises, right? That if we lose weight, we're gonna be so happy and we're gonna be so confident and we're gonna find a romantic love and we're gonna have the best job. And I know so many people whose weight has changed over their life or who have sought out thinness and it did not make them happier because a body doesn't equal happiness. And sometimes people do claim to feel more confident and I don't doubt that at all. I do believe them when they say that. And I believe them because if you tell yourself in your head that something is good and you achieve that goal, so if you tell yourself that weight loss is good and then you end up losing weight and you feel more confident, you're going to feel that because look at what you're telling yourself. You're like, this is good, this is what I want, this is what I should be, this is what's healthy, this is what's beautiful, and then you achieve it and of course you're gonna feel some of that, but for how long? How sustainable? How does it affect your social life? How does it affect your mind up here? How does it affect your stress? And if you're told that weight gain is literally the worst thing that you can do for your body, for yourself, for your life, and we gain weight, of course we're gonna feel bad about it. And that's not because weight gain is inherently bad, but it's because we are taught and spoon fed this narrative that it is something that we should avoid at all costs, including the cost of our true health. And again, it is not your fault that you feel this way if you do, but it is also possible to change. There is so much at stake for the diet industry, right? They make so much profits and diet culture is around us everywhere. And then there is social comparison and advertisements and influencers who are showing, you know, their 12 day program to these ripped abs or selling supplements to you and you know, how to lose this in however many days. It is not your fault when you are swarmed with all of this information that you feel some type of way about weight gain and weight loss. But I want you to be really honest with yourself. There are so many false promises that come with it and usually it is not fully delivered. Our happiness should not be contingent on a body. Because if it is, then what happens if we're injured and we're bedridden? What happens if we get a chronic illness and our body might change? What happens if we get older and our body changes, which is so incredibly normal? Our bodies are meant to fluctuate, lose weight and gain weight at their own will throughout our lifetime. And if your body is the only thing that makes you happy, then I think that that is a very sad and narrow-minded way to live because you will not always have full control over your body, whether it's because of your environments or just what life shoots at you. So as I wash my leeks, we're gonna talk about some things to do if you yourself have experienced weight gain or if you are gaining weight throughout your recovery journey or just your life in general. We're gonna talk about some things to do that might help and maybe some things not to do that won't be particularly helpful for you. Okay, we're heading over to my stove area over here. We're gonna get things going on the pot. So I'm making a small-ish batch of soup. And again, you really don't need measurements to do soup well, but I have a little pot over here that we are gonna put some butter in there. But one of the first things that I'm gonna say is you do not have to weigh yourself. Knowing your weight is really not that important in the grand scheme of things. And you are totally allowed to do blind weigh-ins and things like that at the doctor. But from what I have seen in my line of work and in my own experience, people who weigh themselves all the time 
are usually unhappy and they allow it to dictate how they feel about themselves that day. And this used to be something that happened to me all the time. I would step on the scale and it would tell me if I would have a good day or a bad day. If the number was lower than I expected or whatever I expected, I'd be like, okay, I'm good. And then if it was higher, I would have a horrible day and feel horribly about myself. I let this little scale tell me how I would feel about myself. And we should never ever give power to anything or anybody to tell us how we should feel about ourselves. No, no, no. Another thing that I think is so helpful is to get rid of clothes that don't fit you. Don't hold on to them in the hopes that we're gonna fit into them again. It's just unhelpful. And so when we open up our closet and we see things that don't fit us, we can get discouraged, we can have feelings of dissatisfaction. It's so amazing to grab whatever item that is in my closet and I know that it fits because I do not hold on to clothes that do not fit me. Clothing is meant to fit you. You are not meant to force your body into a specific number or into a specific size. Sizing really means not much. I have literally ordered the same dress in two different colors from the same store and they have fit differently. I have ranges of sizes in my closet and they all fit me in a similar way. Do not pay attention to the label because it doesn't tell you anything about yourself, your worth, or your value. And truly nobody cares. If anybody cares about the size of your pants, bye bye to them, the little creep that they are in your life, okay? Bye bye. It's literally just a piece of fabric. And something else that was helpful for me was reminding myself that focusing on my body and on a number and on my weight so much never made me happy. It never made me a better person. It never made me a more enjoyable person to be around. In fact, I think that I was way more difficult to deal with when I struggled with my body than the person that I am right now. We are going to add in our leeks into the butter. And I know that this might sound, ooh, what is that? I don't know what that is but I got it. Another thing, and it might sound a little bit cheesy, but do not hesitate to use positive affirmations and to speak kindly to yourself, even if you don't believe it. How thoughts are created is literally by repetition. We know that ABC song, you know, A, B, C, D, all the way to the end because we've repeated it so many times. We know that the sky is blue because we were told that the sky is blue and we've repeated it as we've learned our colors. If you don't think highly of yourself right now, no matter how old you are, does not matter. It doesn't always have to be that way. If you speak to yourself kindly, even if it feels like you are lying to yourself, you know what, fake it till you make it because one day you are going to say kind things and you're gonna wake up and you're gonna believe them. If somebody told me back when I was a teenager that I would actually love myself one day and think of myself in a really good light, I would have laughed in their face, flipped them off and walked the other way. I was my own worst enemy. I hated myself. I thought that there was nothing good that I had to give to this world. I thought that the only important thing was my body and what I had to offer. But as I started practicing positive affirmations and I still do it every single day to this day, I rarely have a negative thought about myself. Most of the time, I don't even think about my body because there is so much more brain space to think about other things that are more important to me than that. And when I'm old and shriveled and wrinkled and using a cane to get around, I don't wanna be thinking about the number on the scale. I don't wanna be looking back on my life with regrets and saying I didn't go on that vacation or to that friend's wedding because there would have been this food or I would have gained weight and I would have been insecure how I looked in a bathing suit. There are so many more important things than your body and you have to tell yourself that. And even if you don't believe it right away, repeat over and over and over again. Also something that is super helpful is just to unfollow accounts online, especially in this day and age of social media that make you feel like shit. If you are following people and you're like, oh, I don't look like them and oh, they did this this morning and I'm so unproductive and you always have negative thoughts about yourself when engaging in their content, unfollow unfollow. I'm so pro block button. You don't owe anybody, not your friend, not your mother, not your sister. You don't owe anybody a follow ever. Protect your peace. A statement that I would encourage you to repeat to yourself too is that bodies are meant to fluctuate. You are not meant to be in the same body that you had in high school. My goodness, we are not children anymore and it's okay to grow into adult bodies and for our bones to literally shift and change. Not everybody gets to experience growing up and aging. And for me, that offers a very reflective sort of experience for me when I really think about it or when I'm down on myself is there are some people that don't get to age. There are some people who don't get to gain weight because their lives are cut short. And who am I to start complaining about what my body looks like when some people would give anything to come back to life no matter the body that they would be in. Bodies aging and stretching and growing is a privilege and one that we should get to embrace and not see as 
the worst thing in the entire world to happen to us. Prioritize your health instead of your weight. Think of health promoting behaviors instead of thinking about a number on the scale. Another thing is like don't engage in diet talk. Set boundaries. A boundary that I have in my life, even though I'm super confident in all of my decisions and everything, is that bodies are not topics of conversation and my food is my business just like your food is your business. Food talk and diet talk and body talk, there's so many more important things to be talking about and more interesting things. And those boundaries are in place, again, not because I would find them particularly triggering at this stage in my life, but because it's so boring. Now that the leeks are all wilted down, I'm going to add in my potatoes. I don't want to grate garlic right now, so we're literally doing a two ingredient soup. Well, a couple more ingredients, but you get the gist. But if you are somebody who struggles with your body image, please talk to somebody, whether it's a therapist or you have a supportive network like a recovery coach or something like I do. They're talking to family and friends, an online community. Talk to somebody. You don't have to keep this all inside and deal with it on your own. But one of the biggest tips that I can give you is to trust your body. And that can take some time to rebuild and that's normal. And we can talk about that in another video if you'd like me to. But your body knows better than a diet plan or some online calculator that tells you how much to eat in a day. Your body is smart, give it credit. There is no room for shame or guilt on your plate. Shame and guilt are not ingredients in food. I always want you to focus on providing for your body instead of depriving it. And when we focus on making changes, always focus on addition versus subtraction. That's always gonna make us feel like we are in an abundance mindset instead of a scarcity mindset or a restrictive one. And even if you don't believe it right now, Tell yourself that gaining weight is neutral and normal and it's part of a healthy body, a functioning body. I'm gonna add in some chicken broth until we cover our potatoes and leeks. But also understand that the things that you say in your own head are not true. Thoughts are not facts. And the person that is always going to be most critical about your body is yourself. And if anybody else is critical about it, they are basically announcing to you and other people that they are not confident in themselves. I've never ever met somebody who is healthy and happy, tear down another person or comment on their body in a negative way. Only unhealthy and unhappy people do that. So just take it one day at a time, okay? Small changes in the right direction when it comes to how you talk to yourself and treat yourself and how you treat your body is gonna go a long way, but don't give up. Keep on trying as hard as it is to break away from some of these values that feel important to you but in reality and in practice only make you feel worse for me i think about all of the times that i've just wasted hating my body bringing myself down missing out on events saying no to friends turning down birthday cake on my own birthday or on the birthdays of other people i'm going to repeat this again but we are not here just to lose weight and to be seen for our bodies okay we are so much more but anyway we're gonna leave this soup to chill on the stove for a little bit but before we do that i'm going to add in a couple of bay leaves just to add a little bit of je ne sais quoi you know i'm going to add in three and i'm telling myself this out loud because you're going to have to remove them later so i'm putting in three you guys got my back okay i remember one time i blended a soup with bay leaves in it and it was horrible it was really really bad it's just like a crunchy texture that you can't escape no matter what. It like flakes into so many different pieces. But I'm sure that you can see that I'm passionate about this topic and I hope that somebody out there, even if it's just one person, needed this little pep talk with me and needed to hear some of the things that I've mentioned about weight and bodies and everything like that. But I will see you very soon for when we finish up this soup. I'll probably be showered and changed into pajamas at that point. Hello friends, so some time has clearly passed. I finished my client calls for the day, took a nice hot shower. I'm so excited to eat, so let's finish up this soup together. So I'm going to fish out those bay leaves first, and I'm just going to toss those in the compost as well. And you don't have to cook the soup for like two hours like I did. Honestly, once the potatoes are nice and soft, you're good to go. But I feel like soups just get so much better the longer we let them sit and marinate. Marinate, marinate. My brain is literally like a scrambled egg in my head right now at the end of a work day. But anyway, got the bay leaves. You can season the soup however you like, but I'm going to add in quite a bit of salt and some pepper. I'm not really in the mood to add cayenne pepper or chili flakes or anything like that today, but if you like things a little bit spicy, you can do that. Then the last ingredient is just some cooking cream. And so I'm just using this 35% cream. And you can add a little bit, you can add a lot. Soups are so versatile and 
foolproof. I love a creamy blended soup. So I am going to use my immersion blender and blend it all up. And again, clearly this is not a fancy recipe, but recipes do not have to be fancy or have tons of ingredients to be delicious. Sometimes going back to the basic is just so satisfying and wonderful. But let's blitz. I was gonna say let's blitz this bitch. Let's blend her up. Reminder to remove those bay leaves, okay? I've made that mistake too many times. And your soup is literally done, just like that. I don't like to blend it fully because I love some chunks of potatoes in there, but go to the beat of your own drum. So it might not be the prettiest soup in the entire world, but it is so, so good. And whenever I make soup like this, it literally feels like fall is around the corner. Now a little taste test. It's nice and thick, exactly how I like it. Cheers. That's hot, but so good. I'm gonna toast up some bread to serve on the side and enjoy my dinner. I hope that this video was helpful. Thank you so much for coming to my TED Talk. But if you like videos like this, then just let me know in the comments down below and if there are other topics in particular you would like me to talk about. But enjoy the rest of your day, do something kind for yourself, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye, friends.